create super realistic portraits with Laura. Hello my friends, how are you doing? I hear you like my rhymes. So today you come to Maya Gora trying to learn about Laura, diving deep into the flora like Dora the Explorer, trying to give your art some shiny aura? I think I can do that for you. Also, don't forget my live stream tomorrow is going to be a ton of fun. And I know the process of installing something new with command lines is like doing your taxes, but I will make it fun, easy and quick. Let's get started. So first, what we want to do is to go to the GitHub page of Koya SS. Not the best acronym at the end there, but yeah, let's scroll down here to where it says requirement dependencies, which means what you have to install before you can do the LoRa install and then also the installation guide here. So what you need here is Python 3.10 and this will actually download 3.10.9, but it also works with 3.10.6 that you have installed for automatic 1111, which this tutorial is about because we're going to use that with LoRa right after we've installed it. Then you need to install Git, just download it and run the install file and then also Visual Studio. So download that, hit the install too. If it asks you something at the beginning, just say OK and then run through the install. Very, very easy. Now next what we want to do here is to give some administration rights in PowerShell and this is also very easy. Copy this command here in the gray area and then control C on your keyboard. In the middle down here on the Windows bar click search and type power. You have Windows PowerShell here. Right click on that and click run as administrator. It will ask you if yes or no, click on yes. Then you have here the PowerShell window and here simply control V to paste this in here and hit enter. This is going to ask you about the execution policy. You want to set it to yes to all, which means you simply type A at the end here and then hit enter again. That's already it. So you can close this window now. And next, what you want to do here is to create a Koya folder. So go to your documents folder up here, new folder and of course type Koya. When you have that, double click on that folder to open it. For you, this is going to be empty. Now we want to go into the regular PowerShell from this folder. Here's how you do that. Up here, you have the address bar. Click into that and simply write PowerShell. Hit enter. And there we go. We have PowerShell loaded with this address of the folder already loaded for you. Now go back to the installation page and here you see this big field with the text. Up here you have a copy icon. Click on that to copy that text. Go back into the PowerShell window and there with Control V you copy this in here and it will automatically start the install process. Now this will look for you something like that. It will take quite some time because it's doing a lot of installing, a lot of downloading, but after some time it's going to be finished. And the way you know it's finished is because it says accelerate config. When you see that and nothing else is coming, hit enter and this is going to ask you a couple of questions. For the first question, which type of machine you're using, just hit enter because you want to use your machine. For the next one, select no distributed training. Don't select multi GPU, select no distributed training. For the next one, the answers are actually highlighted for you. So do you want to use training on CPU only? Type no, hit enter. Do you want to use an optimized script for Torch Dynamo? Type no, hit enter. Do you want to use deep speed? Type no, hit enter. And then for the last one, on which GPUs do you want to use? Type all and hit enter. After this, don't close the window. Because we are going back to the installation page and here you can see an optional step that you can use if your card supports CUDDN which actually stands for NVIDIA CUDA Deep Neural Network. So this is usually supported by the Series 30 and Series 40 cards. As you can see here with a 4090, if you have really spent on your GPU, you can increase the speed by almost 50%, pretty powerful. So you want to download this file here, then you want to extract that zip. And you want to go to the Koya folder that we created at the start. And now in here, there's a Koya SS folder. Double click on that and drag the extracted folder in here. You can see I have a CUDDN Windows folder right here. 
After you've done this, there is this gray field here for the command we need to install that. So again, you can click here on the copy icon, you go back into the PowerShell window, paste that in there, hit enter. It just takes a couple of seconds to install, then you're finished and you can close it. Now we are almost finished with our LoRa install. One thing I want you to do before you run LoRa is go down here in the LoRa folder, look for upgrade.ps1. You want to right click on that and then select run with PowerShell. This is going to do an update for you of the LoRa files. After you've done this, simply click on the GUI.bat and this is going to load LoRa. So you see this window here, this is the local domain for that. So you want to copy this over into your browser. And when you hit enter, you see this web UI. Now this looks very similar to automatic 11.11. It has a lot of complex settings in there, but once you know what to do, it's actually pretty easy to use. So on the top here, you have these different tabs. What you want to select is Dream Booth LoRa. And there you have some other tabs down here. The first one is for the source model. This means which model do you want to use as a base for training. Now the good thing here is you can link these from your stable diffusion folder. You don't have to download them again. So rather than using these optional quick picks here, because this is going to download the files, I would rather suggest you click here on this letter symbol, then go into your automatic 1111 install folder in there to the models, in there to stable diffusion and select the model you want to train with. In my case, I'm going to select realistic vision version 1.3, the one that I've shown you in my last video, you can check this out here. If you just want to have a neutral model, you can of course select the 1.5 model and that will give you great results too. So now that we've selected this, we have here the folders we want to use. And of course we also need training images. So again, in the documents folder, I have created a folder called LoRa training data so I can find it easier. Open that and in here for your images and also for your files, you want to have a specific folder structure. Go up here to new and create a new folder and call it after the training you want to do. So let's call this test. Then open up this folder. In here, you want to create three different folders. The first one is called image, the second one lock, and the third one model. Now in the image folder, you want to open that up and you want to create another folder in here that has the training steps per image underscore the name of the model. Because I'm using 15 images or more, I'm going to write here 100 underscore test. Now in this case, as you can see here, I put some images of myself and I have to do some explaining beforehand because this is actually not an ideal example. What you want to have is to have photos of the same person from different distances, from different perspectives, in different light situations and also with different clothing to get better results in different kinds of AI situations. This method that I'm using right here works great if you only want to create close up portraits of yourself. But for example, if I would like to create a full size image of me, full body, the head would be much smaller in the AI image and the AI wouldn't know what to do with that information. Also in LoRa, you can technically use different ratios and different resolutions. But personally, I would still suggest that you crop all of these images to 512 by 512 because then the AI knows exactly what you want to train in that image. Now that we have these images, you also need to have a text explanation and this you can create with clip. Click up here in the address bar, control C to copy the address of that folder. You want to go back here to the LoRa UI, click on utilities. Then here you want to click on blip caption and enter here the directory of the images. Now what you also want to do here in the prefix is to add your name or the name of the subject you want to train or style you want to train. In my case, I write here Olivio and then I click here on create captions. Now the important thing here is when you run this the first time, this is going to download the blip model and this is about two gigabytes. So first it's going to take a little bit of time for you. 
But after that, as you can see here, the process is very quick. So now we have all these text files in here. And when I open them, you can see it says Olivio, a bald man with beard and a blue shirt. And because all of my images are the same, it is saying the same thing in each of these text files. Now, if you have a lot of different scenes, you want to go into these texts and see if they are correct or if you want to adjust the description of the image a little bit to help the AI understand better what is going on in the image. Now we are ready for our LoRa training. So go back to the Dream Booth LoRa tab here and then go to the folders tab and you see here we need the image folder, the output folder and the log folder. You don't need training images here so we save some time on that but optionally you can provide training images too if you want to. So let's copy this over but it's very important here that for the image folder you do select the image folder and not the 100 underscore test folder in there. So with the image folder right click copy as path and then put this in here. Do the same for your model folder. This is the output folder. Copy as path, put that in here. And then for the logging folder, of course, right click on the log folder, copy as path and put this in here. Now for the training parameters, the strange thing here is you don't set the training steps. Because the training steps are actually defined by the folder name we have put here as 100 underscore test. So this will train 100 steps per image. Now there's a lot of settings in here. Most of them you can ignore. At least it worked very well for me. For the training batch size, what this means is how many images this is going to train at the same time. And this will also reduce the training steps. So when I have here training batch size of one, this will mean with 18 images and 100 steps per image, I have 1,800 steps. But if I set this to two, this will reduce the number of training steps to 900 because two images are trained at the same time. You have to experiment if your graphic card can handle two or three batch size. Down here for the mix precision, I experimented with FP16 or BF16. I didn't really see any difference between them. So you can try either of them for the mix precision and safe precision. The other settings you can actually leave as they are. You have down here some advanced configuration settings. In here you can mostly also leave everything as is. But if you have a graphics card with low VRAM or an older model of a graphics card, you might try to turn on gradient checkpoints here and also turn on memory efficient attention over here. Here are some additional things to look into. For the max resolution down here, you can leave it as 512, but you might get better results even with a 1.5 model by setting this to 768 by 768. I also found when the rendering happens in automatic 1111 that often you get much better results with 768 by 768 even with a 1.5 model. Also, for the model you choose, it's important if you know that this is 1.5 or 2.0 or above, because then you want to make a check mark here to V2. And if you have a 2.1 model, you also want to choose the V parameterization. But because we have a 1.5 model, we don't need either of them. Up here for the training models, you can either choose Safe Tensor or other models like CKPT, which might work with more different web UIs. But Safe Tensor works well because we are mostly using this in Automatic 11.11. After this, simply hit Training and let it run through. On my card, if I have set it to batch two, this will take about nine to 10 minutes. If I have set it to batch one, it will take around 15 to 16 minutes. After the training has finished, go into your folder, look for the models folder and you find here your save tensor file. You can now simply copy this over into your automatic 1111 folder in there into models and in there into your LoRa folder. Now here I have already two different files trained on my name. So we're going to use them next. So next we're going to start automatic 1111. For this, of course, double click web UI user.bat. 
Before we can use our LoRa model inside of Automatic 11.11, we need to install the extension for it. So click here on the extension tab, then click on available, click on load and scroll down until you see the Koya SS additional networks. On the right side, you have your install button. So click that. After the installation is done, go to installed, apply and restart UI. And you can see here the additional networks. Now, personally, I would suggest that you close down your command window and restart automatic 1111 altogether to load everything again. After this is done, we can start prompting. Now, because I want to have super realistic portraits of myself, I'm loading the realistic vision version 1.3 model. I've showed you this in this video here. So you want to go to the Civit AI page. You want to scroll down until you see the versions, download the V.1 model and click here on download for the save tensor file or the pickle tensor if you also want to use it in Invoke AI. Then load that model in Automatic 11.11 and now to use our LoRa model, we have a new button over here that looks a little bit like a speaker. So you want to click on that. This is opening up all of this. So you want to click here on LoRa and there you have your different LoRa models. So when you click on that, this will actually add this part here to the end of your prompt. You want to copy that, delete it and then put it where you want to have it in your prompt. And generally you want to have it further to the front of the prompt. In this case, my prompt is raw photo portrait photo of a man bald with beard, Laura Olivia 2 colon and it says one here. I'm going to reduce this to 0 0.8 wearing a stylish suit. Background is a city at night, colon 0 0.2. And then we have high detail skin, colon 1.2, 8K UHD DSLR soft lighting, high quality film grain Fujifilm X-T3. And I didn't come up with this prompt myself. This is actually one of the example prompts we have here, specifically from the picture of this woman here. So you can copy that from the website with the prompt, with the negative prompt and also with the settings down here if you want to. If you want to get back, of course, to your automatic 1111 settings, you will need to click on the LoRa icon over here again. So now you have the standard settings. I have my sample steps at 30. I'm using 512 by 768 because I want to have a long portrait. And then let's do a test render here. And here is my result where I have a very dapper outfit. I hope you like it. And of course, share your result in my Facebook group, 33,000 amazing members. Leave a like if you enjoyed this video. Thank you very much for watching and see you tomorrow in my live stream. Bye. Oh, you're still here. So uh, this is the end screen. There's other stuff you can watch like this or that's really cool. And yeah, I hope I see you soon. Uh, leave a like if you haven't yet. And well, um, yeah.